Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Elizabeth, I'm a primary teacher here in California. I'm in my classroom. I wanted to do like a really short vlog, just a little update about where we are at in the year. I just wanted to give you a peek into what we are doing right now and what we're learning about. So with that said, if you wanna see what we're doing, just keep watching. Are you looking for a multi-sensory program to support your young readers? We've been using the Brain Spring Phonics First curriculum in class this year and my students have been having so much fun. I can officially say we've got readers. Brain Spring is accredited with IMSLEC and IDA and offers their courses in self-paced, live stream, and in-person methods. Click on the link in the show notes for more information. Now, back to the vlog. So if you follow me, you know I teach at a year-round school. We do sessions and so we have like six or seven weeks on and a week or two off and then we just kind of continue that cycle throughout the year. We do have a little bit of an extended summer break but we kind of are in that routine of quick sprints like six, seven weeks and then a break and then a sprint and then a break. So for each session it's themed differently. Now this session we are working on life skills. All right. So we are diving into the Montessori Practical Life Manual, and I'll try to link this down below. And we are learning all about life skills. So things that are literally life skills, brushing your hair, sorting laundry, folding clothes, washing dishes. We're trying to kind of dive into those practical life skills here in the studio. I'm gonna show you a few of them and kind of talk about how I set them up. So let's dive in all right so first of all i got these little bins from the target dollar spot thank you target, target dollar spot. and i use these to basically create centers for the different life skills i am using the montessori based practical life manual and um, i'll link it down below so i'm going to go through those really quick with you so bean transferring so using um, their whole hand transfer beans, using two glasses, two pitchers, using a scoop. And so I have a bin here with beans and cups. So the challenge is to use the scoops and pour into the cup, but the cup is on the table and their goal is to fill their cups without spilling any beans. If they spill the beans, they gotta restart. Some of these are more challenging than you would promise. Uh, cutting paper. So I just have a bin with scissors and paper with just different prints on it they can cut out. Water transfer. So over at our sink, we have um, sponges and glasses and pitchers and funnels and strainers and turkey basters where they are just practicing those fine motor skills, transferring water. Um, the three finger grasp. So using clothes pins to pin pictures. I have a string set up in the studio where they can just literally like clip clothes pins and pictures on the string. Transferring water using an eyedropper and then also pom pom, little pom pom transfers. So they dump these out on the table and then they have to one by one pick them up from the table. Some of these skills might, you might be thinking like, this is way too easy, why are we practicing this? But you would be surprised at a few things, I think. The feedback that I'm getting is, my hand hurts, which is awesome because they're working those fine motor skills. And we talk about that, man, when your hand is hurting, that means your hand is working. And when you work at something and you practice, 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 you get stronger. All right, cleanliness. So working on hair combing, shoe polishing. So I have a bin with um, like hair supplies, but the rule with these is and you just have to make sure you're you know obviously sanitizing and everything is that whatever comb they choose that's their comb their name goes on it it goes in their cubby but then they can use this comb to practice grooming their hair shoe polishing is just a sponge at the sink and one of the water transfer activities is to transfer water using a sponge so soaking up the water squeezing it out and then using the dampened sponge to clean your shoes. So there's actually two skills in that one. All right, moving on, food preparation. So snack, um, spreading butter or peanut butter. If you have allergies in your studio or classroom, obviously gotta be mindful. I always teach my students to peel a banana. So like if this was the top where the skinny stem is and then this is the end. So peel it from the end and it's actually easier to peel than trying to get that top part off and broken. So peeling a banana and then cutting a banana into bite-sized pieces. 
um, taking their time and being very methodical about their slices. Cheese grating. So I got a cheese grater from a dollar store. It's not one of those like big cheese graters that you could like, literally I like probably have scars on my hands from like slipping. <laughs> Obviously I need to practice these too. So cheese grating is one. Peeling a carrot or a piece of fruit is another one. Um, and they're just learning, you know, to go from your body out, correct amount of pressure. They loved lacing, so those fine motor skills. So lacing, stringing beads on a string. You can also teach math, a couple math skills with this. So you can teach counting, count to 10. You can do patterning, so A, B, A, B patterns. There's a lot of different patterns that you can incorporate in that as well. All the things. Okay, arm movement. So sorting, folding a cloth, packing a box. So I just have a box here of stuff and I hand the box to them like this and I say, okay, we're gonna dump it out. We dump it on the table and then you have to repack the box. <laughs> And the rule is to earn a badge, you have to make it so that the box folds flat. So this would technically be good. If it folds flat, then you earn a badge. And I cannot tell you how challenging that one is. Critical thinking and problem solving skills are in full bore with that one. I only have a few heroes who have actually completed that task. Whisking with soap suds. So putting water in the sink, pouring in some soap, and then using a whisk to whisk bubbles. It's really challenging. Like I was trying to show them how to do it and my fine motor skills are obviously more advanced because I'm older, but it was really challenging for them. I haven't had anybody earn that one yet. Small object washing, baby doll washing, hand washing, dish washing, mirror polishing. So mirror polishing has been fun. And they just spray the mirror and polish the window and they love it. All right, sweeping. Oh my goodness, this has been such a great one. So we do what we call studio maintenance here in the classroom. And basically what it means is you gotta clean up after yourself and take care of your space, respect your space. So I got these little dust pans that they use and I got like 10 of them. Originally for studio maintenance, I only had like two or three brooms. And to be completely honest, they do their best, but they don't really make a huge impact. So I end up sweeping the floor or we call older heroes to come in and help us. So that's also a life skill. All right, that's all of the skills that we are working on this session. You guys, it has been so cool to be able to see them get excited about learning a new skill. Just wanted to share those tips. I will link the curriculum down below. Um, in addition, I wanted to share a couple of things with you about how you can modify this for your classroom. If you're a teacher and you're like, well, we don't, we're not Montessori, or you know, we don't have the time to lay out or roll out a full curriculum, you can easily put these in centers just like this, you know, in the bins, and then just have a life skills corner and put three life skills out a week, whether it's sorting buttons or sorting things according to category, which is also a math standards that hit there. You could do some fine motor activities or also fine motor, but stringing beads. And then just set those out in your life skills corner and each week rotate through those. They get, you know, a class reward or something from the treasure chest or a classroom buck if they complete and can show proficiency in one of the challenges. So just wanna encourage you, you can totally modify this. You don't have to do it the way that I'm doing it. Obviously you may not be at a school that is structured like mine, that's totally fine. But I do wanna encourage you to teach life skills. Life skills are very important and you can develop so much ownership and confidence in your students by doing this. So that's all of that for you today. I'm excited to share with you this little adventure we've gone on in this session all about life skills. Comment down below what your thoughts are. Start a discussion, I'll link stuff in the description. As always, thank you for watching this video. Like, share, subscribe, and join the family. Also, if you're not a part of our email list, you're gonna wanna sign up for that. I've got a whole vault of freebies, free resources waiting for you. Go get literally like dozens of resources that you just download and they're seasonal and evergreen. You can use them anytime. So I will link that down below. Go sign up for the newsletter on my website. All right, guys, that's it. That's all I got. I will see you in the next video. Bye.